All right, welcome to the Wilmer Public Library, an exciting time to be here, as is always. And if you're looking for something to do over the holiday break, the library is a great place to come, Kathy. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that are available here at the library, starting off with the Play Spot. We're looking at the Smart Play Spot here at the library. It's been a great asset to the community. The library is very grateful to the funders, Jenny O. Turkey Store, Southwest Initiative Foundation, Empower, and Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad. We're now looking at the fishing boat here at the library. Children can, and adults can climb aboard on a small boat and take off anywhere their imagination can take them. The benches in the boat become a perfect place to sit and read together, or children and adults can pick up a magnetic rod and go fishing. Fish are labeled with individual letters can be sorted into the cooler, labeled with word trunks to build words and taken ashore when the boat docks. Here we're looking at the picnic table and the grill. Here the children can prepare a picnic with their family or grill out, cook a hamburger or a hot dog and have fun pretending they're at a picnic. Here we're looking at the farmer's market. This is a fun and engaging market for the children to explore new words and colors. Children can sort fruits and vegetables and adults can join in the fun of being a customer or vendor. Here we're looking at the alphabet market. The children can point out letters and use their fingers to trace shapes together with their parents and form words. Here we're looking at Zuckerman's barn. The children can pretend to care and feed farm animals. Inside the structure, children can explore audio buttons to match farm animal sounds to a picture. Along the back wall, are open cages for farm animal puppets such as a chicken, pig, or turkey. An animal rhyming pegboard is on the wall. Parents can also sing with their children to the song, The Farmer in the Dell. Also look inside the barn and maybe you'll find the spider web. Here we have the puzzle stand. It's a small stand that supplies shelving for four puzzles and has a room on each side for three early literary interactive activities. And finally, we're looking at the train rug, where children can sit down on the rug and play with the wooden train set. All right, the Smart Play Spot, a great place to come here at the library uh, to do some interactive games and activities with your parents or just the kids to play by themselves while the parents sit and read or whatever they're going to do. Uh, speaking of activities, uh, there are a lot of other things that are going on here over the break and throughout the year. Uh, give us a few things activity-wise that are going on now that parents can come in uh, over December and January. Well, we have our children's book club and a children's matinee once a month. We're also having a holiday story hour. And every week we have Baby Laps It. And once a month we have Bringing Stories to Life. And that's in the evening. So if you can't make a daytime program, you could come to Bringing Stories to Life. And that's in the evening. Well, there's always all kinds of things that you can do. Don't forget, you can check out books. You got the children's books. You got uh, adult books. You got magazines. You have uh, movies that you can come and check out. And if you're someone who doesn't have uh, the internet at home, there's internet computers here, and even a couple small uh, computers called Little Tykes. Uh, tell us about what those are, Kathy. Yes, we have two little tight computers, and the really young children they just come in and they can just sit down and play games on them. It's fun. It's uh, not just for children because I actually went down and did a little playing on it myself and there's some fun uh, interactive games there too. So if you want any more information about the library, uh, hours or any of the different activities and events that are going on, feel free to call 235-3162 or you can check it out online at WilmerPublicLibrary.org. You're watching Do You Know? Do, do.
Hi, Jody Wambeck with the Wilmer Early Childhood Family Programs and Wilmer Early Childhood Initiative. Tonight we are in Pennock at the Community Center for the November WOW event, which is being hosted by the United Way of West Central Minnesota, Growmobile, and the Wilmer Early Childhood Initiative. Joining me tonight is Michelle White, who is the Success by Six Coordinator with United Way. Michelle, we have a Healthy Bodies, Healthy Food theme going on tonight. Tell us a little bit about what we are doing. Well, tonight when families come, they can make fruit smoothies. We're doing berries and orange juice and yogurt, getting a little protein in there along with our fruit. We're also doing um, some celery, cream cheese, and pepper stoplights for the kids, something, a fun snack craft for them to do while they're here. And we have a healthy version of popcorn. I know microwave popcorn's been something that's really easy to just pop in there, but not necessarily the health, healthiest, healthiest thing for you. So we're gonna air pop popcorn tonight and use coconut oil instead of butter and sea salt instead of regular salt. We also have um, Jess here and she's going to be doing some gross mov movement activities with the kids, so. It is going to be a fun night, a lot of different activities for the children and the families to participate in, so we're really excited to get that started tonight. Our December WOW event is going to be at Redeemer Lutheran Preschool, and that will be coming, be coming up in the early parts of December, and of course, they always have such a great arts and crafts night. And then January, we're going to be at the Wilmer Public Library, so be watching for more information on that. Also, be sure to check out the Community Ed and Rec brochure, as we have a great kind of a winter wonderland type event for um, young children that will be out at the community center so be sure to look that up in the community ed and rec brochure and then as always be sure to check out the library the smart place spot at the library they have a great thing over there and I know Kathy has a lot of fun stuff for you to do so you are watching do you know Uh, good morning. We're here for Do You Know at um, Santa's Workshop, which is actually Stacy's Nursery, where there's a lot of activities going on. Uh, they're getting ready for the holidays, getting some wreaths made, um, some swags. They also have some beautiful Christmas and winter plants out here that we can look at. 
And so we'll start out with the, all the workers that are out here, and Angela will take care of that part. So I'll introduce you to Angela. Hi, good morning. Thanks for coming out here this morning. Yes, this is uh, Santa's workshop and Stacy's slave shop, we call it, out here at the nursery. We are currently working on a lot of different projects. Uh, today we are finishing up the swags for the Wilmer Hockey Foundation. They sell oh, roughly 5,000 pieces out in the community to help um, support their ice time and their uh, hockey foundation out at the Civic Center. So today we have Laura over here is uh, constructing all the swags. And it's kind of a neat process that goes into all these wreaths and swags. Um, the boughs actually come in large pieces. Um, behind Laura, there's a pile there. And those are, uh, the we get those up north, kind of by Deer River. And they're a large, a large bow. And then Jay over here cuts them into smaller pieces. As you can see there, he's cutting kind of the top part of the swag or the sizes of the wreaths. We do construct um, about 5,000 wreaths for different uh, fundraisers here in Wilmer. And then what we do is, I don't know if you can zoom in and see the clamping machine there. We clamp this this kind of big staple, it looks like. Uh, and it, she's making the swags right now, clamping those together. And today we have to do 250 of those little suckers. So we'll be here late. And then kind of the next process of the swag, uh, we've got Scotty back here who is doing the pine coning. So the pine cones come in boxes, and we have to put a wire around each pine cone. Uh, he's got to do thousands of them. And then Carly puts the pine cones on the swag. So it's kind of a whole assembly line here, kind of a fun process, a little time consuming. So that's just one of the pieces that the Hockey Foundation sells. Again, they sell uh, three different sizes of wreaths and treetops and treetop kits. And just it's a really fun fundraiser, I think, for them in the community and us to be a part of. So uh, next, I think I'll show you a little bit about a mixed wreath. I'm going to hand the microphone back to you so you can uh, kind of talk why I make. <laughs> OK, you're working on a wreath here. And it looks like it's several different kinds of evergreen um, also, some boxwood, it looks like, and I know th that we're going to be using some pepperberry. Yeah. Um, so I can just tell you a couple, a couple of what these things are, basically. I'm making a wreath out of Fraser, which we get from North Carolina. So that's one of the only products that we don't get from, from Minnesota here, a beautiful uh, Fraser. And then we also have some incense cedar here that we're going to use that's got these little yellow seeds on them. Some Oregonia, which is very similar to a boxwood. It's a variegated green. Um, all this stuff can be used in pots or wreaths. And then we also have this pepperberry right here, which is really fun to use to add some color. So I mix all those ingredients together to get the mixed wreath. So I'm just going to do a couple clamps for you to see. All right, the machine looks almost like a giant stapler. And you put the... Um Put the bows in, and then they stamp the stapler with their feet. So, and that holds it together without having it come apart. I know one time I tried to make my own wreath. <laughs> as soon as the wind came up, all the little pieces started blowing away. I didn't use a big giant stapler for mine. So, um, but it is an interesting process, and. Um, a lot of the products that they're using are also for sale. I, I know last year I saw pe some pepperberry here. Yeah. And um, so if you are interested in getting something for your home or for outside your house, um, they also have that for sale here at Stacy's. And in a few minutes, we're going to look at a couple of their arrangements, too, that they put together. Um, I wouldn't mind having that one, Angela, but <laughs> you're probably... But. So this is kind of similar to what we do, a lot of the berries and the cedar and the balsam and then the Fraser, of course. Um, we primarily use the Fraser for our retail store and the balsam for all the fundraisers because the balsam has so much fragrance mm -hmm. that people really like that. So that's what we do for all the different fundraisers. And then for our retail, we use all the Fraser. They call that one the Cadillac of Christmas trees, you know, so. Well, I also noticed, and I was mentioning to Angela, there was a shrub that she had here this fall that had white berries on it. Could you just tell us a few little bit of uh, facts about that in case someone's interested in purchasing a shrub? Yeah, sure. Um, when we were out, what, where, were we, where were we doing that? Out at the horticulture? 
night. Uh, we were talking about different shrubs you can incorporate into your fall and winter pots. Uh, it's nice to be able to use some perennials and shrubs so that then in the spring you could just plop them out and put them into the ground. So the shrub that we showed out there was a new shrub. It's called the snowberry. Um, it's a white little berry and very kind of drapey, almost looks like a strand of pearls. They do come in pink as well. There's a pink one as well. Um, but the white is, is prettier for winter. Uh, we do have some of those in pots outside. Right now they'd probably be frozen, so I don't know that you could use them this year yet. But but yeah, it'd be a neat fun, a neat shrub to incorporate into your summer or spring plantings or, or fall definitely so now uh we're going to move on to the winter flowers that they have uh in the flower shop here so we will stop over there right now we're in the flower shop and we're looking at several varieties of winter plants uh winter plants that are for indoors and one of my favorites, and I'll turn this over to Angela in a minute, but one of my favorites is a Christmas cactus. And I have a couple that I bought here, well, maybe three years ago. And they're uh, really large. They're about uh, maybe 20 inches across right now. And this one is a brand new one that's get, just getting their buds on. Mine at home, I have a white one or a pearl color. And I also have the, one of the pink ones. And they are out, both of them are in bloom. Yeah. So Angela will explain a little bit more about something. Hi, yes, welcome to the flower shop. So Susan just had to step out because we had a customer call, which is great. Um, she is constructing here some of our silks and um, kind of neat indoor arrangements that you can keep forever. Now I know it's kind of a sin word here at the nursery to use fake evergreens. Stacy would be cringing right now. Um, that's why we send them up north to cut trees on days like this. But a lot of people are getting back into the the fake arrangement or the silk arrangement. And here's a couple that she's actually constructing for Woodland Centers here in town. So they bring the containers in and we do a custom design that they can then have up all winter. Um, you know, this one can be more wintry because it's got the snowman. The sleigh right here is really interesting. Um, and then as you know, if we can look at some of her ingredients that are laying here on the counter and the pan of, of glue, she glues each piece together so that it's very well constructed and doesn't fall apart. You can dip, you know, store it nicely because it won't fall apart. You can tip it upside down if need be. Um, but it's kind of a neat process. And we have a lot of different silk arrangements. I don't know if you're able to look. Can you go way up top there? That was a, a, a light dish that a lady brought in and just said, create something. So up on the top shelf there, uh, sh that's waiting for her to pick up earlier uh, today. And it's just an arrangement that she can keep up all Christmas season. So it's kind of a nice addition to your holiday decorating. Um, also then down here, we'll kind of look at poinsettias are becoming more than just red. That's for sure. So a lot of these are used more for the Thanksgiving season. So we've got the orange tones, the lime green tones back here. They're called key lime pie. Um, blue is very popular for some of the churches uh, for Advent. And then we also have a cream back here. But these are kind of a fun, different color for people to incorporate into their holiday decorating versus just your traditional red. So it's kind of fun. Lime green is one of the colors of the season this year. There's lime green arrangements. There's lime green decorations. Um, also, the gray tones are highly popular for Christmas. Silvers and grays. So a lot of people are doing a lot of grays into their Christmas trees and their holiday decorating. So kind of just a neat, neat addition. So are there any other plants in here that people might be interested having uh say purchase now and then keep them through the winter it's always nice to have something inside when our gardens are closed up so yeah. can you um, think of anything else you want to mention well of course the popular norfolk pine um which i'll just walk over here and grab they're they're one of your more popular kind of fake christmas or not fake excuse me but um a christmas tree look that's that can be in a pot and that a person could keep all season and then people do keep these for years and years i mean they can get quite large and they're an easy to take care of plant so that would be another holiday one that a lot of people do enjoy um, we do have amaryllis balls out in the store too that people do enjoy doing or paper whites uh, those come in boxes or like a little kit and we can plant those up for you, or you can take them home and plant them yourself. And people really enjoy those. They start blooming, you know, more towards the winter when we're all dreary and cold. So they're kind of a fun addition. <laughs> all right, we're going to step back out into the workshop area again and take a look at a few last things. 
This is a special room at Stacy's Nursery where there's just loaded with Christmas decorations, um, some trees that are set up, uh, beautiful, glitzy, colorful things that you can have in your home or set outside. Um, it's always fun to try some new things every year. Um, and uh, we would certainly thank Angela and her crew for allowing us to be here today because they are busy during the Christmas season. So um, now I will say thank you very much to Angela, to Stacy's, and all of the people that we interviewed this year in 2014. And we're wishing everyone a, ho a happy holidays from Do You Know? Happy holidays. This is Renee Nolting from United Way of West Central Minnesota, and I have James Miller, my partner in crime at United Way here today. And I wanted James to wear a Santa hat, but it would mess his hair, and you came in today surprising me looking like Santa. But we're excited to be here today to talk about what United Way has done in this last year and what we're proud of. Yeah, it's been a very exciting 2014. I did bring out the Santa shirt. thought it was only appropriate as we celebrate December and the holidays. But to, to look back on a great 2014, all of the support we've had from, from the area agencies, as well as all the donors uh, through this past year. I'm really excited about the work that we've accomplished in early ed this year. And in December, United Way is going to team up with the Wilmer Community Cabinet, Child Cabinet, and be at the Capitol talking about our work. We have seen a decrease in kids in our region having, um, not having access to preschool, and that's very exciting. Yeah, it's been very exciting to see the, the power and the impact of the Growmobile this past year. One of the great gifts we had as part of 2014, thanks to the Genio Turkey Store, to have the new Growmobile get it out. Uh, we've had some great support, obviously, with Michelle White and Jessica Deek as our two uh, coordinators for that program, just to see the impact it's had on kids across the area. Another thing we're very proud of is we have over almost 2,000 kids on the Imagination Library program. And we had a survey that the Wilmer Public Schools did as kids entered kindergarten, and well over half had gotten that program. And of 108 surveys response, 104 said it made a difference in the life of their child and learning. Yeah, and we look back at the impact it's had over kids, you know, 10 years ago, uh, less than half the kids were ready for kindergarten. Now we're seeing the numbers closer to 70%, and that's a huge impact across our region. One thing we celebrate too is here it is the seasons of giving and we live in a region where people give all the time and we are so blessed at United Way of the gifts that we've received and with that we're able to help over 40 agency programs which help with basic needs, education and health. And as we look at our, our giving for this year, as we're taping this, we're at 40% a goal. Uh, that's a huge number to be at when we're shooting for a $900,000 goal across our region. And that affects everybody in West Central Minnesota. Last year, over 30,000 individuals receiving help from our programs uh, that are funded, all the different agencies we work with. So it really shows a huge impact on our friends, neighbors, and family. 
And one of the last things I can think of is I am so proud of the volunteers that we work with, with all the committees we have from Empower to Community Investment to our board of directors who serve, who serve on also on other committees. I have to thank Marilee Vogel and Kevin Smith, who are our president and vice president of our board for their service. And yeah, nearly a thousand volunteers this past year, over 13,000 volunteer hours donated, uh, not only to the United Way directly, but to the different agency and partner programs that we work with throughout the region. Really getting their hands dirty, their feet wet, just having a great time helping and making an impact on people's lives. And school supplies. I mean, this neighborhood, we just came up with hundreds and hundreds of school supplies for kids in all the area school districts on top of that preschool screening backpacks. I don't know about you, it's been an exciting year. Yeah, it certainly has. We look forward to a, an exciting 2015. I mean, there's so much more work that needs to be done in our region. There's so many more people that need that, that hand up and looking forward to being able to do that in the years to come. But we really look at the, the impact that we're going to have in this next year and see what's going to happen. Absolutely. So what do you think, James? Are we ready for happy holidays? Yeah, happy holidays. You've been watching. Do you know? Oh, no.